All right, so I want to talk to you about Hashimoto's. And as you know, Hashimoto's disease in terms of autoimmune disease of the thyroid produces autoimmune thyroiditis. And that autoimmune thyroiditis uh, causes low thyroid in Hashimoto's, although it can be translatively high because the colloid is damaged and that's thyrotoxicosis. It's different than Graves' disease where the target is the TSH receptor and produces T3 and T4 excess, leading to Graves' hyperthyroidism. So in Hashimoto's autoimmune thyroiditis, just like in Graves' autoimmune thyroiditis, we can get thyroid eye disease. And that thyroid eye disease usually results in proptosis and lid retraction, lid lag, diplopia, and rarely it can cause compressive optic neuropathy at the orbital apex and loss of vision. So those are the well-known things. The thing you need to know, and what we're gonna be talking about today, is that it can also be associated with an encephalopathy. So when I was a resident, we called this Hashimoto encephalopathy. However, because it's not clearly related to the thyroid function, in fact, usually the thyroid function is normal or near normal because they're treated with Synthroid. This is now called steroid responsive encephalopathy of autoimmune thyroiditis. So it's SREAT. So the steroid responsiveness is the key diagnostic feature. They have to get better with the steroids. The encephalopathy can manifest the seizure, mental status change, um, hallucinations, memory loss, can, and it's subacute. So it's not like the slowly progressive neurodegenerative disorders. It, it happens in like weeks to months. So a subacute encephalopathy, they have to have an imaging study that it either is negative or is compatible with only encephalitis. Lumbar puncture can show elevated CSF protein, but shouldn't show meningitis or white cells or anything like that. And the usual checks for the normal things that cause encephalopathy have to be all negative. And that means we need to have an EEG as well. So we have the EEG, the usual suspects, a spinal tap, a negative MRI or MRI only compatible with encephalopathy and the antibody is positive. So TPO antibody or TSID. So we have to have antibody positive. Typically the thyroid functions are normal. They're encephalopathic, it's subacute, negative imaging, lumbar puncture, only elevated CSF protein, EEG negative, workup otherwise negative. And the most important thing, it has to respond to steroids. So in patients who present to me with thyroid eye disease, who are also encephalopathic, a better single unifying diagnosis is Hashimoto's encephalopathy. You can also present with ataxia alone. And steroid responsiveness is the key. You give a steroid trial, work it up, and if you have a steroid responsive encephalopathy that is associated with autoimmune thyroiditis, that is SREAT, what we used to call Hashimoto's encephalopathy.